Hi, everybody in podcast land and also on YouTube. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. I'm Sarah. And this is the Carpal Critics Movie Part... Whatever it is. Where today we're talking about <laughs> A Quiet Place Part 2. Shh, spoiler alert. And if you're part of our convoy of listeners who watch the movies ahead of time, next week we're going to be doing, for some reason... Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Yeah! Heck yeah, that, dude. That's going to be crazy. I'm but stoked. We have the high ground. But so, <laughs> for today, we're going to do A Quiet Place all day. And it's a Sarah episode. Yes! Yeah! What's up, Sarah? What's up? Hi, guys. <laughs> nice. Uh, David, what are you giving this movie out of 10? A Quiet Place 2. More like A Quiet Place to Fall Asleep. Whoa. Oh! Whoa. No, that's not my slogan. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was with you. You were awake. I was awake. Uh, it was close, man. If it was colder, if it was warmer, I would have fallen asleep for sure. Exciting and concise, but overly familiar. A Quiet Place 2 is emblematic of the good, but not great sequel. Echoing a lot of the feelings that worked in the original by, while never amplifying them. Mm. Ooh, I'm gonna give see it a, what he did there? Turn the gain up. I'm going to give it a buffered rating because uh, our viewing experience was not ideal. Right. Uh, and so I enjoyed it as much as a six, but I'm going to give it a seven. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the listeners, though, everyone at this table saw this movie at a drive-in theater because it's the only theater that's open where yes. we live. Uh, Sarah, David, and I actually all saw it last night. Right. Riley, you saw it. I saw it on Saturday. And you're in the nosebleeds, too? You, like, you, oh, so you guys were we in the nosebleeds? We pretty yeah. far away. That was my question. We I was, were, like, in the very back oh, row. Man. Oh, we weren't, we weren't that, that far. Bad. You have to get there, like, 45 minutes early. We got there half an hour before, and... Our uh, field of view, in terms of how big the screen was in our field of view, was <laughs> like a phone. about equal to a phone at <laughs> yeah. arm's length. Yeah. Not a I, big phone. That's what I said as we were like walking back to our, our car, and Lauren's like, don't say that. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, it's it's true. It it's is, like true. it's like watching it on a phone and with worse audio. And farther from your yeah. face than you would hold it. It's oh, man. I was hoping you guys would have had a better like a better seat because, man. Our audio was pretty good, though. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, so what are you giving it out of 10? So my slogan is, unfortunately, the drive-in theater where I saw it was a bit too quiet of a place, but I think it was a good movie? Question mark? I also gave it a 7 out of 10 with a question mark because I'm like, I th I don't know. Like I, I'm assuming that there's a bunch of this movie that I haven't experienced. Yeah, and that if maybe if I did experience that, it would be a seven or or above. But yeah. I don't know. Immersion? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really really depend on immersion for my experience, and yeah, it just wasn't there. Sarah. All right. Despite enduring a half dozen mosquito bites, <laughs> the odd set of headlights shone directly into my eyes and shit radio audio. I still genuinely enjoyed A Quiet Place too, or at least what I could make of it. Nice. <laughs> Seven out of ten. Can't wait to watch it in high def. Okay. Yeah. She, something's happening. She was in the row behind us, which oh, was yeah. about 15 to 20 feet farther back. Oh, so you, you were ahead terrible. of her. Yeah. yeah. We were like in the fourth last row or something. Oh, okay. I was yeah. staring at them the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you cut the making out? Yeah, cuddling <laughs> a little, you know. Nice. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh. Ooh. For us, the audio, we had like a, a big Bluetooth speaker with us. I didn't really miss anything, but there were some dark scenes where I mm. was definitely was this... I felt like an old man who the kind of like, I hate the theater. I want to just watch this on my TV at home. Yeah. But I yeah, knew... Yeah. Watching it on an OLED with surround sound would have been way better. Oh, better. yeah. You're like sitting on your folding chair out in the open night air and you're like squinting forward like a like an 80 year old. <laughs> Dude, I, literally, I still don't know the answer to this question. I literally said, is that Cillian Murphy? And <laughs> I still I haven't looked it up. I still don't know if it's Cillian Murphy. Well, it, it's not Cillian Murphy. It's Killian Murphy. Oh, so. OK, but that's, <laughs> that's him. OK. All right, anyway, here's my slogan. Uh, a Quiet Place 2 is an enjoyable return to a universe I'd like to visit. I didn't have to visit it, but shh. What? Shh. Mm. Yeah, it basically, it's just like, it didn't need a sequel. Oh, it wasn't yeah, a bad yeah, yeah. sequel. For sure. Didn't need to exist, but it's fine. That yeah. is a sentiment I agree with. 7 out of 10. Oh, man. Wow, that, wait, we so all we all gave it 7s? Yeah. yeah. That's Tentative. the first time. I'm going to put up a, like, a party streamer thing. But this is this is what's funny though. This is like this is like the averaging out of what our true ratings might be if we had a real experience. Like yeah. maybe right. we'd be all over the place. But yeah. now because it's like the low, it's like a low resolution filter. Yeah. Well, I think anything that's like a sequel that's so similar to its predecessor, it's kind of easier to rank because you already have like a, a mental spot for what you think of a quiet place. And yeah. It's like it's more of that, but kind of like less good because the novelty is kind of worn off a bit. Right. So. Yeah, we'll get into all of that business. Oh. 
We're after this message from our sponsor. Okay. Carpal Critics is supported by Manscaped's performance package kit. It comes with a ton of stuff, including their new lawnmower waterproof trimmer 4.0 with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts. It also has their crop reserver ball deodorant. I don't know when to use it, but I use it. Their weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, which uh, if you have no nostril shaped like mine, they're, those like, nose hairs are just out all the time. I see them. And a bunch of other stuff, including a really good bag that I like. So go to manscaped.com forward slash carpool20 and get, you guessed it, 20% off. Plus free international shipping, which is great. Oh, it's in the code. We're also brought to you by Private Internet Access VPN. Private Internet Access helps you hide your true IP address so that you can bypass geo restrictions and censorship. You can connect up to 10 devices at once and it includes an internet kill switch. <laughs> yeah, if your VPN gets disconnected involuntarily. PIA is available for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even as a Kata and Chrome extension, even if uh, you have a cochlear implant. So check it out at <laughs> lmg.gg slash carpoolcritics and don't flinch at the feedback. Oi, there he is. Right, this is dumb. Oh, yeah. Okay, before we get any further, I kind of I want to know. We've all seen the first one, right? Yeah. yeah. What did we give the first one? I like, would have said, you, like, a, it was definitely recommendable, like, a pretty decent film. I would say 7.5, 7.75. 7. Yeah, I would give it a 7.5. Yeah, I would give it an 8. I watched it the day before yeah. so that I was able to, like, compare and contrast everything that was going on, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, yourself, yeah. I'd probably give it a 7.5, 7.5, 7. 7.75 or 8 myself as well. I really enjoyed it. You know, what, you know what adds insult to injury is that the when I watched it was the day that I got surround sound speakers, Ooh. and it just seemed to be, it turned out serendipitously to be the best surround sound movie yeah. to watch, to, like, check right. out your system, because yeah. You're just so focused on the auditory experience. There's little clicks and twigs snapping all around right. you. And then this I saw with a oh, single no. Bluetooth speaker in front of me. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I, I I had my car radio turned on, but yeah, it, like it was it was decent. It was about as decent as you would expect radio to be. But that just like the dynamic range is just smaller, and like it, yeah, you don't get all the highs and lows that you. Can I get. like the drive-in theater. I actually really enjoyed. It. I think it's a great date night. You just back into your spot, yeah. lift the trunk, get some some pillows and some blankets, buddy. You got a date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's better for old movies. That you're right. not yeah. as concerned about the the minutia. Or you, movies you, where like the audio design isn't as important. Yeah. Like th this one, such an in uh, such an important part of this experience. The reason why John Krasinski wanted to wait until theaters were back open is because people could go into this theater and have this like collective experience where people, the characters in the movie, are trying to be quiet, and the people in the theater are also trying to be quiet because there are these moments where it's like it's tense because nothing yeah. is really happening fast and loudly. So like you know the crinkle of the crinkle of snacks and stuff. It's my, like my hey, when someone does that, it's like yeah. whoa. <laughs> my favorite moment of the entire movie is when the Dolby Atmos logo <laughs> came up, and it was like normally it's like all the surround speakers, and it's like yeah. all around you, but none of the speakers are there. So it was just like <laughs> it's just the one speaker all around you. you. It was just you <laughs> all, <laughs> like, all not, around you, in front of you. <laughs> not only like the audio experience, but the visual experience when you're watching a dark movie like this. Half of the like half of the movie, the sun was still kind of out and yeah. setting. So I felt like I was watching it at 30% brightness. Oh, yeah. The yeah. details were so hard to make out. And, I, and then the there's faces. night scenes as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's just. Uh, yeah. Oh, see, this is the other part of it is that we didn't actually get back to our car be uh, because we went to get concession when we got there. We were like kind of late. So the movie started while we were in the concession oh, line. People. So it was like mostly the flashback scene where the aliens are attacking and we're kind of learning about how it started. So I'm kind of watching that one, like hearing sort of the residual audio from other people's speakers and stuff. And yeah. so I missed a large part of that. And I think it was by the time we got back to the car, it was like mostly dark anyway. So I didn't get that. Well, that, that concludes our review of the Twilight <laughs> Theater. Yeah, yeah, that's the viewing would, experience. Let's talk about that intro. Well, hold on. Wait, let's give us a synopsis. Oh, yeah, let me tell you. A, a Quiet Place 2 immediately follows the events of the first film in which Lee Abbott sacrificed himself to save his wife, Evelyn, deaf daughter Regan, son Marcus, and unnamed newborn baby from blind alien creatures that hunt by sound and have taken over the earth. The Abbott family leaves their destroyed home and finds a shelter belonging to Emmett, a former friend of Lee's who lost his wife and child. He reluctantly takes them in after Marcus gets his leg caught in a bear trap like an idiot. <laughs> I'm not actually mad at him, uh, at him about that. I am. Oh, yeah? Yeah, idiot. We'll talk about it. Inside Emmett's bunker, Regan discovers a radio signal playing the song Beyond the Sea on a loop, which she believes is a clue meant to lead survivors to a radio tower on a nearby island. She leaves a note and sneaks out to go there, intending to transmit the high-frequency noise from her cochlear implant 
which disrupts the creature's auditory system and leaves them vulnerable to gunfire. Side note, cochlear implants don't produce feedback, but we'll get to that later. Evelyn begs Emmett to bring Regan back, and after he finds and saves her from a creature, she convinces him to help her complete her mission. They manage to secure a boat after a battle with some feral humans and creatures, and discover the creatures can't swim. Meanwhile, while Evelyn is out gathering metal school... <coughs> Meanwhile, while Evelyn is out gathering medical supplies, a creature attacks the shelter, so Marcus locks himself and the baby in the bunker, nearly suffocating before Evelyn returns with an oxygen tank and joins them with a creature waiting just outside. Regan and Emmett reach the island and its colony of survivors, but a creature drifts ashore on a boat and attacks. Emmett and Regan lure the creature to the radio station, where Regan plays the noise from her implant through the radio, weakening the creature and allowing Marcus, back at the bunker, to play the noise through his portable radio, period. <laughs> Regan stabs her creature through the head with a pole, just as Marcus kills his with a revolver. Regan leaves her implant in the station, allowing anyone to pick up the frequency and fight the creatures. And let me say, we're going to start with the good things. One of my favorite things about this movie is that ending. Holy crap. Mm, well, it gave me, like, even, like, especially after this whole experience of, like, struggling to understand what's going on, to hear things. Like, I usually watch movies with subtitles. And there, <laughs> the, not only were there no subtitles, but the audio was just bad. And uh, so I, like, struggled the whole movie. And then by the end, I'm, like, seeing this, like, parallel scene play out. And Marcus is overcoming his fear. And Regan is is uh, achieving her her goal here to like help people improve something after she you know caused the death of the other son in the family mm -hmm. so she feels so she feels and it was just like i feel like it it was just a great i don't know do you guys get chills i got chills i did not no oh <laughs> no, man i i, I like the ending um it was abrupt yeah well they did that same way as the first one right right, right i really right. hope that means there's not a third one there will be a third there there shouldn't it's be. already making tons of money yeah <laughs> It's a pretty cheap movie to produce, and yeah, it's, it's going to have a sequel. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The ending felt kind of underwhelming to me. Like, I think it needed, like, one more escalation or something. Mm -hmm. Like, having them kind of quietly sneak through with one monster felt like almost like a lower stakes fight than what we'd seen in the movie previously. Especially because I think the intro was so sick. The first kind of the A-Day, I guess, alien attack day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, day one. Day yeah, one. Day one. That, um, this scene definitely suffered from... I had to, like apprehend that scene like I had to sit there with the tiny field of view screen and be like oh I bet this is really intense if you, mm. if the screen's closer to you yeah like they had having this yeah. car chase stuff, stuff is smashing I was like this looks like a really good action scene I bet people will really enjoy this man yeah. but <laughs> the, the car chase where uh Evelyn's trying to like get through uh you know the street and like people are panicking running all over oh. the place and then there's like a a bus that's the driver's been killed I'm the, I'm like Oh, this is a we've seen this scene so many different times. Well, I, I felt that way. I was like, oh yeah, this is like literally the opening of The Last of Us. Whatever, that's fine. Uh, and which is also like <laughs> the opening of every zombie yeah, movie. Every ever. apocalypse. Movie. Um, but when the bus was coming towards them and she had to reverse and that whole like ten second sequence, yeah. I was like, this is pretty cool. That was sweet. And I really like how they changed perspectives throughout yeah. that sequence. Right. And sometimes you're going to Regan's perspective where there's no sound. Yeah. And, and yeah. back and forth. I love that. The cutting was really good. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um Going back to like the end, mm -hmm. I think the part that ruined it for me the most was the music. Oh. Because you just like, it, it's all like cheerful because you know that they're going to succeed, but I really wish it was just more suspenseful. Yeah. Oh, really? I guess I, I felt no suspense because I kind of felt like I knew they weren't going to die. Like I felt like they knew they were going to succeed. Yeah. Uh, I guess the only question was, was Killian Murphy going to die or not? Mm. And I like that he didn't die, so it's not going to the same ending as the first one. But uh, yeah, I guess I just felt zero suspense. Interesting. I mean, I, I think at that point I was kind of like, all right, the whole movie has been suspenseful up to this point. They've made it to the radio station. The monster's in the ra in in the station. Now the like the suspense is whether she's gonna get the the implant on the on the mic or not. And once she does that, it's like, oh okay. Like we know, once she gets the the mic on the like it. I don't understand. There might have been a way that you could film that that still maintains suspense longer than they did in that like uh, proportionally in the ending, but. Once she gets the thing on the mic, it's like it's okay. Over. Yeah. Well, the it, filmmakers they, they won. the filmmakers agree with you to the extent that we don't even see the kid, the daughter, Regan, uh, reunite with her own mom. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Right. Yeah, we don't. It's just over. But I just, yeah. I just loved that once that suspense is relieved by her putting the implant on the radio on on the on the mic. I'm like, oh, okay, nice. And then so in order for like if they built more suspense after that, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, we get it. Yeah. But I think like having that release of like. Hey, it's been tense and tense and tense and tense, and here's the release. It's this emotional moment where the like it's it's a mirrored 
image, which is like beautiful through repetition. Yeah. Uh, familial bonds, overcoming trauma. Like, it's just great. Well, I love how the movie takes its time to cut between usually two kind of stories that are kind of matching. Mm. Uh, like you talked about the intro or the, the final showdown, but I really like when uh, Killian Murphy is drowning. He's got like the noose around his neck and right. he's drowning and it's cutting between him not being able to breathe. And I can't remember who else is. It's like, the boy and the baby yeah, running yeah. out of They're auction. Running out of auction. And it's like mm. kind of like, uh, similar stakes that kind of amp each other up, and you're like, oh, 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 yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love those simulta simultaneous scenes. They did it twice. Mm -hmm. They did it once when um, Emmett was drowning and uh, they were locked in that chamber, and then second time at the end. But it's it's interesting because like in most movies, you're just watching one set of people or one character go through a struggle but this time you're kind of like on edge for both mm -hmm. and that's what makes it super interesting yeah. in my I, opinion i guess for me the the like i said the sense of escalation is off where um like the ending of the last one there was a couple monsters or the intro there's a couple monsters and here it's they're each facing one monster and we know they're able to dispatch one monster like right. they have the tools uh, well the difference though is is can she do it herself Mm. And now we're, we're kind of getting into the theme section if we're going to broach this topic. Because sure. to me, yeah. it actually, in your synopsis or earlier, Riley, you, you kind of outlined what you thought were the arcs for the two kids. And uh, I like, Yeah, well, well, I was saying what the ending, the ending was good. That's what I, I kind of see it a different way. Which, mm. For me, A Quiet Place, the whole, the major theme of this franchise is, can we protect our children? Mm. Can we keep our kids safe? And in the first one, no. No, the little boy dies immediately. Yeah. And then can they keep their other kids safe? Can they bring this other baby into the world? That's like the whole struggle. In this one, we have that again. Uh, and again, the mom's failing. And, you know, we get this bear trap on this kid's ankle and everything. But parallel to it, we have the kids. Can they keep themselves safe? Right. Yeah. And so Regan, cool. Regan goes off. Uh, she breaks away from her parents and goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do this thing. And prior to her leaving, we see a fight with the monster where she uses her implant and then her mom comes up and shoots the monster. So together they take down the monster. But after Regan leaves by herself, she faces a monster in the train where she is holding both the shotgun mm. and the device. Right. And she uses the device to weaken the monster, but then she's not strong enough to cock the shotgun herself. Right. Uh, and then she would have died if Emmett didn't show up and kill the monster. Right. So that's her uh, not not reaching the heights that like she wants to right mm -hmm. she's like oscillating back and forth between who yeah. she is and who she wants to be uh and then i think at the midpoint that's when emmett says to her like you are just like your dad yeah. which i guess gives her a boost and then the final showdown is she is the one who kills the monster um so in that sense it's cool and and is like above the first one but i agree with you where the monsters are the same as the first one yeah. it's one monster uh, so it kind of loses it. Well, and especially because like the first one, I think a lot of the tension came from the fact that they were invulnerable and there was mm. nothing you could do except escape. Right. Uh, and here, like we've seen them dispatch three, four and like it's not even a big it doesn't even feel like they're a big deal. Like, I don't know if they needed a mutation or if they yeah. needed just more. Yeah. So <sighs> in the first movie, it was like instantaneous when somebody made a noise, the monster was there yeah. and that person was dead. Yeah. And then when I started watching this one, when um, the kid gets his foot stuck in the bear trap, yeah. I'm like, the monster is going to come in like two seconds. And then they had like a good minute and a half to get out of there. And I, it kind of made me frustrated. I was like, the point of these monsters is like, they are there when they hear sound. And he is screaming. Well, yeah. See, that, that didn't bother me because in the first one, they, they mentioned specifically that they think there are like three in the area. Oh. And then they, they kill, kill all three of them. Yep. And so when they're leaving the house, they're like, okay, we've, you know, we've, we've killed our territorial monsters around here. So when he screams, it's like, okay, we expect, I expected one to come, but I was like, Oh, they might be safe because they killed the guy. The, right, the but when they get to Emmett's area, they're far enough from home that yeah. there's different radio reception and stuff. Right. So well, but but that's what's funny is that Emmett was close enough to see the the fire beacon that uh, Lee put up. Uh, he used to put up a, yeah. a fire every night, and uh, Emmett said he saw it. So that it wasn't it wasn't that far away, but it was far enough well, they away. Explain it away why they don't get the the signal. Is that well, this doesn't make any sense though. Like, uh, okay, the humans humans are going to share information. If like I. I'm at the top of the hill and I can hear X amount of information. You're at the bottom hill and you can't. I'm probably going to talk to you on the radio because there's yeah. nothing else to do in this yeah. world. Well, wait, but you're saying Emmett <laughs> would have contacted them? Yeah, just but that's like a, a chain of that's his whole that's his whole arc. That's his whole deal is so. that he he was he he felt like he failed to protect his wife and child because she they died. So then in the apocalypse, he has become this 
like recluse where he's like uh he he's he's held back by shame and sure. he, like he's not going to go reach out and be like hey let's start a commune because he's like depressed and i like okay. that he's a mirror image of jim crimson's character who sacrificed himself to save the family right. whereas his emmett his whole family died and he he's still around oh it's poetic, poetic. yeah I, I like his uh he's characterized so well in that the first interaction or the first bit of him we see is his finger on a trigger mm. it's like this is the a kind of the kind of guy who's gonna look at a family <laughs> yeah. through a scope and yeah. his fingers are gonna squeeze the trigger when he sees a, a woman holding a baby running from a monster. Yeah, that's but, a great bit of characterization. He doesn't shoot them, but he's like, you can feel the tension of him being like, if the moment that this is is like truly, truly dangerous for me, I'm going to kill them because I have to stay safe. And you know, he, he takes them in and he's wearing a mask and stuff because he, even once he recognizes who they are, he still doesn't want them to know who he is. Even more so. Yeah, because he's just shame and once he finds out who they are he says like oh well your family wasn't worth saving mm. and that it's just it's such a cool character arc to see him at the beginning being like i i don't have enough food for you not enough water for you like you need to leave i don't want you here that he sees the baby and then he's like oh okay i guess i can like reason a little bit and then in the end when he's there the whole time with regan um helping her throughout her mission. I really like that moment too when, when she yeah. turns him like in the train or whatever. He's like, yeah. we're going home. We're going home. And they have struggled communicating. Yeah. Like, this is fun. Like, not fun, but like, this is interesting. Yeah, added layer of the communication yeah. barrier was a good totally. extra the, in yeah. this movie. And then when I, he decides to go with her, I was like, I'm, yeah, I'm on board for this. I kind of feel like a, he should have a, he should have been more of a dick. Like, for sure. If he's the type of guy who's going to like almost kill this family, yeah. there should have been a point where he like fucks them over. But I think, yeah, I think that point. he's not like that because he's like malicious or, or jaded. He's like that because he has been uh, reduced to a shell of a man by fear and shame. So it's not so much that he's like, fuck everyone. It's just me now, like nihilism. He's like, I feel this shame because I did not fulfill my duty to my family. And so I'm I'm useless in this regard, you know? And so what she appeals to there is his sense of duty. She's like, you could not do what you had to to save your wife and child. Now's your opportunity to do something. She places him in that role yes. in the tribe because she says, Lee is gone. Right. And yeah, they're and not she, their dad, but you're going to fulfill that role. Right. So she appeals to that part of him that still... Like the reason that he feels that shame is because he had a duty and he failed. So now she appeals to that same part that's like that part of you that feels the duty. You need to reactivate that and let's go. Well, part of his character also though is trust. And he mm. says that all the people who are still left are like sickos. Mm. Right. Uh, so I would like to have seen a little more distrust. Mm. If yeah. there was a thread where like he thought that they that family was up to something right. and was gonna was taking advantage of him in some way and he was distrustful of that, even though it was a miscommunication, I would have I would have liked that. To see yeah. more darkness brought out of him. I really love the moment where uh Regan wakes up after he like saved her from the monster and he's gone because she was sleeping and she's freaking out because her implant is gone. This is the closest we get to what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. And you're thinking like, oh God, he left her like She's left for dead. Mm -hmm. But then she goes outside and he's there with the implant and the speaker and he goes, I found a boat. Yep. And you're like, this is going to be so wholesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a I, great moment. I almost wish that the movie got to that point earlier so that we could have had a bigger adventure because like their adventure mm -hmm. feels pretty small. It's like, okay, we found a boat. We're at a it's dock. True. Yeah. We're on the island. It's like, true. There's not really like these big obstacles. And uh, it, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like this whole movie is just like, it's got really good ideas for its world building, but I think it needs like a l another layer of like, this is what the humans would do in this situation. A and I find well, myself, yeah, this movie. Especially in this movie, yeah. because the, the enemies haven't changed. Yeah. I thought, okay, well, they're going to introduce these sicko people and yeah. it's going to be super twisted. Yeah. Uh, we get that doc interaction and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, like you could do like, like white noise force fields around your camps. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot you can do. And I, I like the detail of like the family always being barefoot, so they're more careful where they step. But then Emmett has boots, and that never comes into play. Like, <laughs> like there's lots of yeah. like those little things that are cool, but it just needs like one more layer of like people really contemplating what the world would look like. like I agree. Okay, if radio stations are still there, there's still power. Why isn't there a better infrastructure for communication? Why isn't there like the government helped evacuate two to twelve boats, but like. So does the government still like exist in any way, shape, or form? Is there yeah. absolutely nothing? This guy played The Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we'll talk well, about that. With any this... post-apocalyptic story, you have to... Well, I mean, we've seen... We, we talked about this kind of in the... Um, what was that movie we did? With Army this? of the Dead. Army of the Dead. 
That was last week. <laughs> I've already, I've already <laughs> blocked tired. it. I've already blocked yeah. it from my memory. Um, we've seen so many post-apocalyptic yeah. zombie whatever movies at this point that we are watching a movie like this and we're like, did they not think of this? Did they not prepare for this? Like yeah. there are so many, like, you know, like we said, zombie apocalypse, what's your weapon, you know? And I think the movie does a little bit to explain some of that away by saying that, you know, the the decent people got on the boats and escaped to this island, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, and then the people that are left, I guess, are like the more uh, bad people who are, I mean, I think I, I forgave the fact that we didn't see more horrible humans in this one because in the first one, they show very clearly there are like cannibals out there yeah. and like, um, it, it kind of made it seem like Abbott, the Abbott family uh, were keeping to themselves so much because they were surrounded by all these like crazy people yeah. who would eat them. You know, so I, I think they do a little bit of, of, of work to explain that. But yeah, you're right. Like there would be people who would figure out. Well, like the people on the island, are they 0% interested in helping other people with boats and stuff? Well, no, okay. because they have the radio station. Well, this is yeah. this is the other but thing. But also, that, yeah, why are they being so cryptic about it? It's not yes. like the aliens can understand. Right. Like, yeah, why not they just play a message yeah. that's yeah, like, hey, come to this island. This is a huge thing that bothered me right yeah. from the get go. Because I'm like, what? Why? You're not going to play a song? Yeah. Just no, put exactly. out a message being like, hey, we're on the island. Yeah. If you can get out here. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's weird. And while we're talking about this island, people, how about when the 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 uh, monster gets there and everyone goes, ah! Yeah. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Why don't yeah. you all just stand still yeah. and hold your breath? Well, they already know what it does. Like, exactly. Is the shock maybe? Like, it's like they, they uh, thought they were so safe and then all of a sudden their safety is burst. I thought that was that was communicated pretty clearly. Um, like the fact that the danger is already there. It's not like they have a chance to be quiet because as soon as Emmett sees that the boat is washed ashore and he's like, oh, there was a creature on that yeah, boat. He's... It cuts to the guy pulling up the pail from the well and it's like, dong, 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 dong. Yeah. And it comes out. And I'm like, oh, well, they're dead. Yeah. yeah. So then I, I think like... they would have drills or something or they just yeah. like, yeah, you just get under a desk and put your hand over your head and just hold well, your yeah, and like I would build a loudspeaker system that blasts like music. So that it can distract the monster, like you would think with like the time that they've had there, they would build a bunker or yeah. something, right? They've had over a year. Yeah, and, and they can make noise. Like, why aren't they partying harder? Yeah. When they get to there, I was like strong COVID vibes. You yeah. know, when you like see some like a group of people yeah. hanging out, you're like, you can't stand that close to each other. What are you, are you guys? Are you kissing? What is going on? Wait, what? Did <laughs> that happen to you? You're like during COVID, you're like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're wearing a mask and crap, and then you see some people standing really oh, close, course, and you're yeah. like, "What? I'm mad at you, but jealous." Uh, <laughs> it gives me anxiety seeing movies where people are close together. Yeah. So they show up there, and it's like a similar situation. But these people are just having like they're talking at regular volumes and having a campfire. That's well, it's all. Like a church, it's a church picnic. Picnic. Like, what do you? But what do you mean? They've been there for a year and a half. Like they're just chilling. This is where they live. They they're could, not going to be like rager every night, bro. Let's go. Like they're just chilling. They're how about families. somebody singing? How about like oh sure, someone, like playing music? If someone was like playing a saxophone or something, that, that would do that it would, for you. Yes, so something beautiful. <laughs> Where was the saxophone? Something more like no, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. More out there. Yeah, and I, guess, also, like, I guess so. I make a better situation or like a better backdrop for the discussion they're having, which I found like the that actor from Blood Diamond. Yeah, like, that he's guy's like awesome. he's a good cast. Jimon Hunsu. Yeah, but uh, they don't really develop. I think that relationship in any meaningful way, like there's no kind of dynamic that I'm interested in. I'm always sad when he's in movies and he doesn't have a huge part. Yeah. I'm like, what? You, you've role. been in so many like good classic movies Gladiator. and you're getting these like bit parts yeah. still. Like what? His anyway. death is so unceremonious. Oh my Which I, I kind of like. I kind of like that uh. it's just like, he's dragged, he's gone. <laughs> um, I watched so many horror movies. I turned to the person beside me. I was like, He's gonna get pulled under the door. Yeah. Literally, well, like a second <laughs> after, <laughs> gone. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially right after he says, "Wait, where's the creature?" Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, 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 it was, it's not following us. Yeah. Uh, this this movie just felt like a campier version of the first one. If I'm being honest mm. with you, like that's yeah. how I felt. I yeah. Was like, oh, they're gonna include more people screaming because yeah. scary. Yeah. And well, <laughs> one thing I think that this one's kind of missing more than the first one is like a clear single idea that it's like pushing towards. I feel like there's lots of kind of good concepts, good themes. Uh, I think all the characters are pretty good, but like I, I, I'm like, who's the protagonist? It's mm. Regan, but barely. Barely, yeah. right? Because it's like you could, I think you could make an argument that it's Emmett, although he's not there for the first 30 minutes, but he has a like one of the bigger arcs and he's active. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the Emily Blunt character that's the linchpin. She should have been doing more. Yeah. There, there was a stronger story over there rather than her just going like, I went to the pharmacy 
And then, oh no, my, <laughs> yeah, then I exactly. got into a tank. That's it. I think well, she needs to be a total badass. Like she, she last right? movie, she's such a badass. She gives birth during like yeah. a monster that can hear any sound. Like, and she survives. Like she's such a and badass. And then she's trapped in that flooding basement. Yeah, and stuff. it's like well, so She's insane. a badass in this movie that she uh, just gave birth yesterday and now she can sprint. So <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I feel like she just walked back and forth between locations. Like, yeah. oh, there's a monster here. Okay, yeah. let's defeat it. Oh, yeah. we're back home. Yeah. Like, I explained away a little bit of that by being like strength of a mother. You know, sure, like yeah. when you're when your children adrenaline. Yeah, and when your children are in danger, you just like you know lift a car or whatever. You know. Yeah, I hate the brother character. Marcus. I hate him. He's just annoying. <laughs> and like, so his his whole arc is going from fear to competence or f to bravery. Uh, but all the fear stuff is so annoying. He just has that face, that stupid fucking fear <laughs> face. He's just like, oh, and he gets the bear trap. Fair enough. That's fucking scary. When his that's dad beautiful. just died. Yeah, yeah. Get over it. It's post apocalypse. <laughs> but that's exactly why the the mom character should be even more badass in this one. Because yeah. she has to rise to the occasion. Yeah. She should be like Sarah Connor. Right. Too. Right. Yeah. Well, and like I think that's one of the fun things in the first one is like slowly discovering how the how Jim Krasinski has protected his family. And like you kind of like find like the, the little devices and like why he right. has the lights up and like why he has these towers, the flames. And like this movie's kind of missing that. There's no like, oh, cool things smart humans are doing to face this post apocalypse. And I think that's such a huge element of good post apocalypse is like, right. oh, this is cool. This is cool problem solving. Like, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Uh, and the first movie has that. And this, and this one, you get more of, of the same of it. Yeah. Oh, totally. yeah. She has to go get more oxygen tanks. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they yeah, have to yeah, take yeah. the weapon they already have. Yeah. I, I, oh, they they found a place in the basement to be quiet. Yeah. 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 Like, I, like, that's a cool idea. Like the steel foundry, I think that's a good setting. And like yeah. having the scream chamber is cool. But I, I would have liked to. I mean, that, that would have been cool to have like oh more of these kind of devices that maybe John Chris, uh, uh, Lee had, had set up. But I think what I would have liked more than that and instead of maybe the flashback in the beginning mm -hmm. was a flashback more in the middle where Lee or, or kind of in the earlier section, but not the very beginning where Lee is kind of like giving his children like they remember something he taught them or something. Yeah. And that kind of helps them on their quest. I feel like that would have been a way to bring Lee into this movie yeah. and and let us not forget that that happened. Yeah. Um, because I think you do kind of forget about it and you're like, you just are in the moment. I, yeah. I it, it bothered me that they did, he said, John Krasinski said that he included that flashback scene in the very beginning, basically as a way to insert himself in the movie again. <laughs> it, it feels like that. Though. Yeah, it yeah. feels like it very I, much does. I think that's one of my favorite parts of the movie though. Cause, and I think that's a big, another big missing element of this one is his warmth. And I think Killian Murphy does a good job, mm. but I never feel the same emotional tie that Jim Krasinski, or John Krasinski, sorry, not Jim from the office, <laughs> um, has where like, I don't know, like the emotional tie that he has to Regan. I'm going to call her Regan because greatest <laughs> president of all time. <laughs> um, no, Regan is like their, their ties not as close and I don't feel the emotional bond in the same way that like when he looks at her in the first one and he's like, I've always loved you. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, this is like such a good build up, a big emotional payoff. And to him, it's like, OK, I'm just going to be less selfish now and kind of like get over my family. Yeah, but I mean, I guess you you made uh, allusions to this being similar to The Last of Us before yeah. we, we started the podcast. And um, I think that the similarity is there, you know, like when they first kind of team up and there's that like two shot of them like, like walking yeah. together and it's like whoa, this feels like The Last of Us and it's like that cool story again that's like emotionally compelling to almost everybody where somebody who doesn't really want to be a parent anymore or who has like been damaged in some way is like, you know, it's these two people learning to to forge this bond even though they're not direct family. And it, like I felt that it was there, but at the same time, I'm like I know that Emmett was so damaged. So like him just getting to where he got by the end of the movie was like, movement enough for me Fair enough. i didn't need emmett to kind of mostly replace lee i think it's yeah. just like right. as long as you know they're all on a journey they're all just trying their best yeah. and i think that seeing that arc was was satisfying well, enough. I wanna, I wanna, let's talk about that a little um, bit um oh. i'm just gonna say something like really quick mm -hmm. going back to emily blunt's character evelyn being a badass also intertwining emmett's character is i was so disappointed when they brought another male figure into this movie yeah. i was like Oh my gosh, she's he's just mm. here to protect them again. Like, yeah. why did they have to do this? I just want to see Evelyn be a badass and yep. protect her family. <laughs> right. But I was really happy with how they used Emmett's arc as like not to be a protector per se, um, for um Reagan. For Reagan, but rather to just be there to help her out and to yep. boost her. 
and to support her throughout what she was doing. Yeah. Totally. So the I think kid, the shows, kids ultimately save the adults. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's cool. That kind of goes back to the theme you were talking about, like, can yeah. we protect our children? Yeah, I, I like that as well. I think that it is a bit sort of like, you know, normative in the sense that it's like, well, we can't have a family in the apocalypse without a father figure showing up, you know, but at the same time, I don't know. I it, it worked for me. I, I think yeah. if I if I kind of take my my like social critical hat off for a second, I you know I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah as long as you're not trying to, you're like, oh, we have to meet these diversity quotas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If instead you're like, well, this actually has great parallels to a previous character we established. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, I think it worked really well. That I'll way. say that against Emmett though, that it it definitely seems like he was shoehorned in just because they had this flashback. It's like, okay, we had this flashback, oh, yeah. and that's how we how established we that him. they knew Emmett beforehand, so we have a little bit of uh, familiarity. Uh, familiarity with him when we meet him. But it felt uh, a little yeah. contrived. It's, but it's for sure just like a sequel thing. We have to add a character. We there should explain right. that they know him. There yeah. should have been another flashback. Yeah. yeah. I think because so. the way it is now with Krasinski, it really does feel like, hey, uh, we want to put this guy in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you're going to be like, well, I thought he died. Did he not die? I uh, think the, the thing that really solidified that feeling for me, where it's like, oh, we want to put Krasinski back in. Is because he does the same thing where they they all get into a pub or whatever and they're hiding from the uh, monster and he has her his hand on her back and she's like she looks at him and he does this sort of what I wrote it down finger to lips while very worried uh, thing <laughs> <laughs> like that's like his I, you saw that in the trailer he does it a bunch of times in the first movie and it's like they do it so many times that it feels like a cheat code to have like yeah. a moment you With know the trailer <laughs> shot for yeah, sure. yeah 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 it's like. <laughs> yeah, they should have had another flashback either with Reagan and him or Emmett and him mm. uh, just in the middle of the movie just to show him another time, bring back that warmth, uh, say something more about the characters, yeah. give somebody a, a motivation boost or something. I like that bar sequence, though, because it's like you're, they're showing us how they're realizing that it's an auditory monster because mm. like they at first, like, why would you assume that it can only hear? Uh, but like through kind of the events, you're kind of un, un you can see how they're pulling back the layers of like it's about volume it's about yeah. audio and, how they, and why they survive because yeah. you're kind of like all right this kid she's deaf she has no idea how much noise she's making well to an extent she has some idea but yeah. she has less of an idea about how much noise she's making yeah that's a disadvantage in this world right but on the other hand on day one her deafness is kind of an advantage because their family already doesn't have to go get down Honey, come yeah. here! They already speak sign language, so they can communicate. They can be spared and not the target of these aliens because they can right. communicate silently. I did find when they were running out of the bar, and it was like the kind of like chase sequence. I found that a little bit ridiculously unbelievable. I was like, <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't have gotten away. The monster oh, would have caught up. And yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, the monster's he hearing is so inconsistent. On the one yeah. hand, you can be like, you can sneeze in the woods, and this thing comes and kills you within seconds. Right. On the other hand, it's in the room you're in. And you're breathing heavily, standing against the wall, and suddenly it's like a blind T-Rex. You're yeah. like, well, this is yeah. This and is it can't a, hear you breathing six feet away. It's well, like, not only that, but this is a huge inconsistency. But like a, an animal, a beast that could breathe, that could hear that acutely, would hear your heartbeat. Absolutely. Yeah. Like so, you, there's no way you're surviving in a room with it. You know, like, maybe it has some kind of. It, the way it works, it's like really good at looking far, but then when it gets close, it sucks. Like. But that's Maybe. not. It's yeah, funny. I don't know. <laughs> we're we're starting to bring our own explanations into it. Um, one thing I wanted to say about the sign language thing is that that's a, like that was a really cool plot point in the first one, uh, as well as this one, where they learned sign language for the sake of the daughter, and so that helps them survive. But um, I thought that it was it was also they demonstrated how it could also be just beneficial in normal life, where uh, in the flashback scene, the 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 son is on the baseball team and he's about to hit. And he looks over at his mother, and her, his mother is across the whole field, and so she's not going to, like, yell or something, right? But she signs, breathe to him, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's, like, you you have this, like, long-distance sort of instant communication method that doesn't involve you shouting your head off. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. And then yeah. they also breathe that, bring that back later where, I mean, it's not the sign language thing particularly, but she, she signs to him, breathe in that first scene, and then later when... He's panicking about, and she's about to head out, and he's like, "I don't know how to take care of the baby. Ah, what am I yeah. gonna do?" And she's like, "Breathe." Yeah. That just like, man, that just gets me when well, parents, I, yeah. are, when parents are telling uh, kids to like have be control the, over their emotions. Yeah, 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 they're freaking out. Their emotions are running all over the place, and parents just like, "Listen, breathe. Remember what's what's the deal is." And they're like, kind of center yourself and like, oh, "Okay, wait, I can do this." I just love those. I love, <laughs> my favorite sign moment though is uh, 
Killian Murphy being like, hey, how do you say dive? Yeah. And, like, Whoop. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that feels like kind of normal. It's like, yeah, you dive in baseball. That's cool. But then it comes back and he's just like, yeah. That was yeah. wick- that was actually wicked. Iconic. Yeah, this is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I completely good, missed yeah. that because really? I saw I saw him do the dive motion, yeah. but I didn't know that it was set up earlier. Oh, okay, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was a really dark scene. It was kind of hard to know what was going on. That's fair. Mm. I, I also, didn't I didn't realize like that the noose had bells on it until oh, they started ringing. I, like I didn't see. I, I didn't, didn't quite man, get it. I didn't get any of the mechanics of how that was working out. Me like neither. I'm like, why does he have a noose around him? Why like what? Why is he connected to the other guy? I'm like I missed. All of that. I was so confused. Yeah, and like, I like that there's feral humans, but it's also like, they don't exist except to be an obstacle. Like, it'd be way cooler if we saw a little bit more of their society, right. how it worked. It's like, as it is, they're just creepy people with they're dark just, makeup that stand yeah. there. And <laughs> they're dirty. They yeah, might, they're as, dirty. They, they might also, as well be animals. Yeah. I just really question their, like, logic bet- behind making their victims make noise because it's still bringing the monster to where they are, even if yeah. they're hiding. Yeah, uh, like, right. That happens twice. That happens first with the tripwire because I, I think that's for people and not for the monsters. Yeah. And then second time on the boat launch when they tie that noose to his neck and it makes noise. It's like you're literally bringing the monster to you. Yeah. I don't know well, what you, you want know, to in happen. In the case of the first one, he's in his compound, so he knows. Yeah. That goes off. I can just get in my little shelter. Right. But the second one, I don't know. It's more like a Mexican standoff thing yeah. where it's like this is equivalent to pointing a gun at you, and since you're probably not suicidal. You probably won't ring the bell, I and mean, I guess they're betting on that. Well, but yeah, I mean, I, that, the reason why that's dumb is that in an apocalyptic situation, everyone's kind of suicidal, so you never know. Like, it's kind of a dumb idea to capture somebody and be like, "We're gonna eat you," but you might die earlier if you move yeah. faster, less painfully. With yeah. this, yeah, it's almost a incentive for them yeah. to start making noise. Yeah, like, honestly, if I got captured in the post-apocalypse and I knew that they were gonna kill me, I'd for sure try and take at least one with me. Yeah, they yeah. could have just shot a gun. It would have also made noise. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I just don't. Yeah, well, it doesn't really make sense. You don't want to waste bullets. I guess. So. Yeah, well, on, honestly, the smartest thing would to do would just be put tape over their mouth or something. Yeah, like. Yeah, tie did, them up. Did you find that weight? scene was slow? Like. Eventually, that nighttime scene a lot happens. Mm-hmm. That's when, like, she's in the pharmacy. Uh, there's problem. There's problems in every storyline, all at the same time. Yeah. But the build up before those problems actually kick off was five, seven, ten minutes mm. of not a lot happening and pretty silent. And I felt that was a slow beat. Interesting. I think this movie moves at an incredible clip. It's pretty like, quick. It's. Uh, it was, I mean, like, yeah, almost it- like jar. Like, I love efficiency in storytelling. I think this movie does a really good job. But there's a couple times where I'm like. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> like when they first arrive at the camp on the island and they it's just like, it's them flummoxed and then they're sitting at the fire eating. And I'm like, yeah, whoa, okay. Yo, I was so confused. Yeah. When they Me were too. with the people at the fire at first, oh, yeah. I was like, what? who who are these? It, yeah. it, it, wasn't clear these to me, it wasn't clear to me that they had reached the island. Yeah. yeah. Me neither, yeah. yeah. I was like, what? Who? Where are these guys? Where did they yeah. come from? And I'm, I'm into that. And there's like a lot of like smaller jumps like that throughout the movie where it's like, I don't really need to see the minutia of you like opening a door and like crawling yeah. through. It's like, you just get there, fine. But uh, yeah, this movie is like, like last week I complained so much about Army of the Dead being so slow and showing such unnecessary stuff. And this is like the opposite kind of almost problem. Mm, I, yeah. I like it. They should have I, had a parade waiting for them at the island, like a big reception. <laughs> and then it turns out to be like a weird Wicker Man Culty. cult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah honestly, awesome. honestly, like, yeah, it ended a bit quicker than I expected. Like I, I, I also thought going in that this was an, this movie was over two hours. Uh, yep. For some reason, I had seen a runtime, but I guess it was just under two hours. Yep. And uh, but I would prefer it to end quicker than I expected than mm. to drag on. So for I sure. think I was kind of like I was like, what? Well, that's the ending? Oh, yeah, okay. But I was I was okay with that. Yeah. yeah, and I think leaving the ending ambiguous is better if you're gonna do a sequel because like if you see them get back together, then there is no question. Whereas now. There can be like a little bit of a story, a little bit of a drama about it. Yeah. I have some questions for you people. Yeah. Yes. What did you think of the scene where she leaves her wedding ring on the cross of, of her of her son? Is that what happened? I was I trying to, <laughs> honestly, I was like, I wrote a note down. I'm like, did she leave something at the cross or like yeah, take something? Yeah, she took off her wedding ring. And act, it's really confusing because on the one hand, it's I could see <laughs> she's like fuck? trying to move on or something like that. But yeah, it's been a day. She puts the wedding ring down and it's intercut with scenes of right when she puts the wedding ring down, Regan takes the hand of Emmett. Emmett helps her up. Like they're holding hands in that scene. Hmm. So it's kind of like new dad. But yeah. there's no romance between no. Emmett and Which is and good. Evelyn. I'm glad. I was scared of that. <laughs> yeah. Agree. But I'm just trying to like, what I don't think they would have mean? romance. I feel like they're just not, they're not compatible in that way where he's like, oh, I, I'm beating myself up, up, up about this. And her former dude yeah. was like, 
I am protecting my family. Yeah. There's not going to be any romance when this guy's dead wife is still rotting in the next room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, very good. Oh, um, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I, obviously, it's trying to symbolize like forgive and forget. It happened. He passed. Like it's time to keep going, keep pushing without him. But it, in the aspect of like the storyline in the movie, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it for feels what they're weird. Trying to well, make she it doesn't. Do. It doesn't feel like she's dealing with her grief. It feels no. like she. It feels like it's been ten years and she's moved on. Yeah. yeah. And I think I honestly think this movie would be better if it was six months later, mm. uh, and they had like kind of were in a new place or like had changed and like then they were brought here because I think yeah. you could develop how they were feeling being in a different place and it's just like yeah why does she feel the need to put her wedding ring down the day after her husband fucking died like yeah. that's weird it and why weird didn't she choice. go and visit his body we never see. She, like the first movie ends she's in the basement killing yeah. stuff this movie begins I don't think she's left the house oh yeah Whoa. he just dies in the cornfield right like, isn't she gonna go out there and like he, di he dies protecting them from a creature who's like trying to get at them in the truck yeah so then the oh. kids just tell yeah. her his body's just probably lying out out there somewhere I, think that I wouldn't go see the body it's probably mangled and horrible you probably would you probably I, yeah. would bury your spouse I don't I mean you wouldn't bury them that would make that would make noise you're just gonna go out and just watch the hawks come down and you don't have to watch apart. them they're leaving right, okay. get out of there it's just I a body know. I wanted to see a, a, some some moment between them yeah. uh, I have a question regarding the first to the first movie transitioning to the second movie um, at the end of the first movie you see two other creatures running towards them in the cameras and she cocks the shotgun mm. and then it ends and then when we go transition it into this movie same time the, where are the monsters like did she kill them yeah oh okay yeah i think okay. that they're just giving us like they're assuming that we figured yeah. that out i guess i honestly yeah completely forgot about that but i guess i mean the implication it would be cool if they kind of showed that in some way just to be like first frame of the movie is boom <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, if it was black screen. Well, and that's honestly, all you, you hear that. That'd be kind of cool. The way that it's the movie opens with this flashback. Um, I think that would be really cool to like the because it jumps to the the present and they're like walking out of the house, yeah. being like, "What are we gonna do now?" But like that would have been so cool to just like go from this flashback and jump forward and just hear, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I don't know, that'd be cool. Especially because there was two of them coming and we've seen them defeat one before, yeah. like. Or Let's maybe watch them defeat too, you know? Maybe it would have kind of, like you say, ruined the sort of element of suspense where we are still scared for them because these creatures are formidable. Like, yeah. we have a method of fighting back now, but, like, it's not perfect. Yeah. And, like, you know, we see that Regan plays the frequency and it affects the creature, but then she shoots and she misses. Or yeah. she it glances off, you know? It doesn't kill it. So it's like, they don't have a surefire, like, kryptonite. It's like, we have at least a method of sort of fighting back now. Yeah. Second question. Is having more kids in this world the stupidest thing ever, yes. <laughs> or is it kind of like your duty? Mm. You know what I mean. I mean, I like, definitely I was like, "Lady, you're, why did you have a replacement kid in this world, and you have to make a box and give it oxygen? Like, what are you doing?" I mean, are condoms still being produced? Putting, Maybe that's not a choice. <laughs> everyone at risk, but then on the other hand, it's like, what? You're just gonna give up? You're just gonna give up on the species? We're all dying. They win. I mean, so there's a couple things that play in here. I I imagine that they don't have. Well, I guess no. There was a pharmacy. They could they could have gone and grabbed birth control, I suppose. But maybe that's know. what everyone grabbed first. And yeah, the world yeah, is it's all gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gasoline bullets. When do, you have, <laughs> when do you have time to uh, reproduce? Like, there's you're, time. You're, there's you're always time. Well, these guys, these guys had time. They had their whole setup. I guess you know? so, yeah. but like, um, I, I, it's I, so I, dumb. Slowly and quietly. I think it is. <laughs> I think it is your, I mean, well, I mean, I guess it depends on your moral framework, but I guess for me, it's like, Here yeah, we go again. <laughs> it is a, it is a duty in the sense. I can understand why people would feel a duty and, uh, you know, if you don't want the human race to die or if you want the human race to become entirely these like feral cannibal people and you want there still to be good people in the world. Uh, yeah, it is your duty, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's the dumbest thing you could do for sure. Especially with monsters that respond to sound. You can't, I mean, maybe you could train a kid to be completely silent. I don't know. It wouldn't be a, easy. She needs more oxygen tanks. She took the last two, and that kid is going to be Holy stupid crap. for two years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like so, there should be two a, or three years. Yeah, there should be a messed up society that like removes the vocal cords. Of people. See, this is what you're saying before. Like, show us, yeah, show us weird, how people are adapting. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like they don't even have vocal cords. Oh yeah. man, that would be so tr uh, tragic. 
And then they find them and they're like, yeah, we have a way to fight back, actually. We could return to normal. And they've already ripped out all their yeah, vocal like, cords. Or like, they're just like, uh, it's uh, like the deaf community. Like, it's just, it's not, they don't see it as a disability. It's just another way of being. This, right. mute, this mute community would just be like, yeah, we don't need that. Yeah. yeah. We're going to stay in our little well, that's what commune. I th- when, I, when they saw the, uh, the, the feral humans, I thought they had, like, the one shot, it looked like the guy had no eyes. And I was like, that's a cool twist that they all remove their eyes so that they're, like, hyper aware of audio. And that oh. that's their way of fighting out. Like. They're, yeah, like that's kind of a little bit sloppy, but like there, there's something there. They'd have to get pretty fanatical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but I mean, they're eating they, people, so they're already half there. Yeah, you know? that's kind of bird boxy. Kind of. Yeah, oh, they yeah. do something yeah. like that. Yeah, if they did that, then people would just be like, "Oh, they stole that from Bird Box." We yeah, stole the concept. You don't want to steal anything. From an bird box. apocalypse. I guess yeah, yeah. you could still make noise, uh, doing other things though. So I'm not sure if like they would doing it, <laughs> <laughs> making babies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the deal with? Uh, uh, okay. In the first one, there's like a frame grab where you can see written on their like explanation whiteboards that says, why don't the monsters eat their kills? So like they're not hunting mm. humans to eat them. They're hunting them because they maybe they hate noise. And like you make this noise and they're just like, oh, my hearing is so sensitive. Just, just, just shut up. So this goes, yeah, this goes to your uh, to fan theories about what the aliens are. Yeah. Because A, they're clearly adapted to exist in Earth's yeah. atmosphere and environment. B not water though, right? Well, so 70, obviously, was that seventy percent of the planet's if, water? If they're evolved, they come from a planet that doesn't have bodies of water, so they don't know how to swim. I mean, cats don't really like swimming, but they can. Swim. Okay, all right, anyways. <laughs> B they don't kill, they don't eat their their victims, so it's like, are they predators? Or are, they are they herbivores? They weapons? They have big teeth too. Yeah, like they're definitely think. carnivores. They have sharp teeth. Yeah. What, what is their subsistence? Subsistence. Well, they probably eat a bit of the humans. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the other thing: they have armor. They have armored skin that's bulletproof. So to me, the thing that makes the most sense is that it's an it's a genetically engineered weapon by a different species that's sent to Earth to to wipe us out. I don't think that the the writers have this. I don't think there's any lore at <laughs> yeah, all. It's yeah, just maybe. like we want. Let's do a horror movie, or you got to be quiet. And that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the extent. Of well, it. yeah. And if they explain it, it'll be so cheesy. Like if you find out like there's another alien species that sent them, you'll be like, and like they arrive on Earth and like we're here to take over the Earth. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, that would be hilarious. But if it's in your head, it's like, that's cool. But that's then really it does cool. raise no. questions like, okay, so if there's a waterfall or like a source of noise that's very loud, do they run, like do they just run into it a bunch? Like do they hate it? Or they go, okay, that noise, I have to live with that one. Right. Oh man. So if humans made like a, a like a force field of white noise, yeah. would that infuriate them? Or would they go, oh, okay, fine. Gotta do nothing about that. I think I in know, some so ways questions. it might attract them, but then once they get to there and the white noise is happening, you'd be more safe closer to the source of the white noise because yeah. they couldn't hear everything as as well. Yeah, it's just like a big bright light they can't yeah. look into. I mean, the the big big point against the uh, genetically engineered alien weapon theory is the fact that they don't have eyes. It's like you could give them basic eyes. Well, depending, you're an alien though. You just have you've never you, heard of eyes. What do you mean? Well, you can't just you, you can't. Imagine what different aliens' environments are like. I guess so. They they just like. <laughs> I mean, I I imagine that in order to get to the level of science necessary to uh, travel to other planets, you'd have to work with uh, the electromagnetic spectrum in some sense. Yeah. Maybe well, unless it's like aliens, where yeah. they're just like they're just predators, like they're just animals. And, yeah. You know. Wait, can aliens um, see? Yeah. Like that, like an the alien, xeno- alien, the xenomorph. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Does it have a- eyes? Do we ever see eyes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe not. I think on this on the no, no, side. No, no, you don't. I don't know. I don't think they. I think they have. Little I don't think eyes. you ever see eyes. Maybe not. But right. uh, maybe correct us yeah. in the comments. Maybe the aliens are a capitalist society. And it's just too expensive to manufacture eyes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about how this is so similar to The Last of Us. Let's go. Yeah, we skipped so over I'm that. So I'm going to do like a little synopsis, but uh, please for both games, for both things at the same time. You have a prepared statement. Yeah. So it's like it's a man who lost his family must learn to trust a young girl with a specific trauma slash disability that helps her. Yet a unique power over the monsters that could save the world. He's reluctantly sent on a mission by a badass mother figure to help the girl for a short trip. But when he realizes she may be the key to saving all humanity, they embark on a longer journey to a fabled spot where they can distribute the solution worldwide. Okay, that was... And it's like, that, that's on top of all the more superficial stuff. Like all post-apocalypse, post-apocalyptic stuff kind of resembles itself. And there's right. always going to be kind of similar things like human colonies and whatever. But I... One of the weirdest things is that the color grade is almost exactly the same. Like the way the colors <laughs> look in this movie and the game are almost exactly the same. And I was like, this is fucking Wait for weird. the Last I mean, of Us movie. Well, or, yeah, the TV show. show. But how much of that do you think is is like 
uh, coincidental in the sense that they're both apocalyptic things. They spend a lot of time in the forest and around like decaying uh, things. For and... sure. I think it's one of those things where I don't think they like play the last ones. So like we're going to steal the story. <laughs> I think yeah. it's more that a lot of post-apocalyptic stuff resembles. I found it just striking midway through the movie. I'm like, this is the fucking last bus. Yeah. I, I but, think uh, it's a more of example of like these sort of um, similar stories merging in the collective uh, consciousness so that, enough. you know, it becomes this archetype. Yeah. But I think what I, what, what uh, Jordan most, Peterson would uh, say. Like, <laughs> why I wanted to bring it up is I think that it makes the ending kind of worse for me where I think what makes the last of us story so special outside of like, is this a spoiler? Yeah. My, big spoiler for last of us one. Uh, skip ahead 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, is how the the end of the last of us is a total subversion of what you expect. That Joel, like, turns away from heroism to save the person that he loves mm. and doom the rest of humanity. And here, that's not a choice. That's not a moment. It's just kind of a more generic like, well, a hero sacrificed himself to do the thing, but he doesn't even have to sacrifice himself. They just do the thing. Uh, yeah. And it's like well, it, yeah, it, it sucks suck. because, like we like I said, all post apocalyptic stories kind of resemble each other. And I think you need to have something to say or somewhere to take it and i don't feel like this movie has somewhere to take it well okay i i, I for one second here's oh, xenomorphs uh they don't have any visible eyes uh -huh. but they have features that could be interpreted as eyes uh -huh. those features are also black so it's hard to tell okay. it's possible that their eyes are like uh, lizard eyes which could be underneath a layer of skin uh -huh. right thank you computer <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you are looking for that um narrative like i, I feel like there's once you identify that this narrative is very similar to The Last of Us, you're like, okay, I'm looking for a similar sort of twist or a similar sort of like thematic character element where Joel in The Last of Us has to make this choice between saving his surrogate daughter. Surrogate? Is that right? Is that sure. Right? Yeah, surrogate daughter or, or you know, doing what's for the greater good for humanity, which is like killing her in order to extract the cure to the virus. Mm. We already said Last of Us spoilers, so if you're still here, you heard that, okay? Yeah. It's an old game. Um but I think that the knowing what the purpose of this movie was, because John Krasinski has said it in the past, uh, where he's like, this is sort of like, I want this to be sort of a gift to my family and like a testament to my children and my family where, you know, they, they it's a story of heroism. It's not so much a story of like, the world is broken and we're just broken people are trying to make it in a broken world. It's yeah. like, it's supposed to be an optimistic, uplifting tale. And so I think that having that ending... It did give me chills because that's kind of what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, maybe if like uh, Emmett did sacrifice himself, it might have added something. At the same time, I, I know that he's trying to make this a bit more appealing to family audiences, even though there are like, you know, gruesome monsters and stuff. It's so. not, I think I think like I would let my 11 year old watch it. Oh, totally. Like it's not that violent. Yeah. It's scary. It's tense. But it's like you don't really. It's not that bad. It's not a horror. It's a thriller for sure. Yeah. yeah. You guys want to get into hit picks, nit picks? Sure. Yes. I guess so. <laughs> well, are there any characters we didn't talk about? The baby. Um, <laughs> the baby's just baby. annoying. Quick TV. Crying. Amazing arc. I was. I. I. I mean, this is kind of a nitpick, but uh, I really didn't like the like running out of oxygen storyline. It was like, mm. okay, yeah, they're gonna run out of oxygen at the last moment. Like the tank's gonna run out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it just felt like, and I think, kind of going back to what you're saying, where it's just like. This movie it kind of gives you what you want, but I guess I want more than that. And that's why I'm giving it a seven, not an eight. Is is, right. is it's giving me like it sets up stuff and it pays it off and it's like, yeah, this is how it can roll out. This is how like the 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 screenwriter like playbook tells you how to do it and it yeah. has no surprises for you. Yeah. There's nothing novel, nothing exciting, nothing different. Right. It's like a new director with a screenplay from guys who wrote it in college. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is, Lo. It's like a pepperoni pizza from Pizza Hut. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it exactly a pepperoni pizza, but maybe like a deluxe. You deluxe, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like there's there's a lot there. With stuffed crust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's deep <laughs> dish. There's a lot there yeah, yeah, to yeah. dig into, but yeah. at the end of the day, it is meant to be appealing to mass audiences, and clearly it is. It's doing very well yeah. at the box no. office. Um but uh, yeah, it's it's not like a it's not like a Marvel movie, but it's 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 got a little bit more to dig into than a Marvel movie, but it's still very much enjoyable for yeah. regular people. And that's fine. I'm glad I'm just glad to have movies again. Yeah. Me too. Um now that you mention it about the baby, the the whole end of the first movie is based around having this baby and right. keeping it safe, and you would think that would come into play a lot more in this one. And all it does is cry. Yeah. Like mm. literally it cries and she has to get oxygen for it. And the the baby is such a high stakes 
device in a movie that yeah. you could do yeah. so much with yeah. it. Exactly. Honestly, yeah. though, from the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't want to spend the whole movie. Are they going to spend the whole no, movie tr- lugging around this baby and have it be like cry at the, well, at the instead, wrong Instead, she's completely Taken inconsistent out. with this baby. Yeah. First, it's like, holy crap, look at that barn burning down. I'm going to walk in there with my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, okay, maybe you don't trust your kid to hold the baby, but who walks into a burning building with a baby? Okay, yeah. Nobody. And then days later, she's like, Oh, where am I going, son? Oh, I'm just leaving for several hours without telling you. Yeah. And by the way, you have to take care of the baby. Yeah. So yeah. do you care about the baby or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't get it. I think at some at some level, maybe all of their brains are a little frazzled, you know, from uh, from having to survive. So like, maybe she's just like, I have to go do this. It doesn't really matter if I like let them know particularly. It's like they're used to being in a life or death situation constantly. Are we, wait, are we talking about Emily Blunt or Regan going on? Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. I, that was one of my like sort of nitpicks, but it can be explained away with teenager brain is Regan just like not talking to anybody about yeah. going away. Because like, I think Emily Blunt would have been like, yeah, we can do this. We can save the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't think that it's set up that Emily Blunt is particularly jaded. And I think like maybe she could be reluctant where it's like, oh, we have to protect this baby. We have to protect ourselves. But the, I like, I don't know, her just running off kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It definitely way. felt weird. I feel like I agree with you. I think that Evelyn probably would have been down with the idea in some way. Like maybe mm-hmm. she would have tried to send, send Emmett instead yeah. of Regan or something. Yeah. But like, it's an interesting, or you she, know, Marcus says, mom will never let you do it. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you should bring it to her attention. Like yeah. she does, she's not an idiot. She's yeah. great, actually. She, we've already seen she's a badass. Yeah, okay. Here's more nitpicks. Uh, there's a scene where Emmett and Regan are walking on a path, and they each are on their, you know, paths. They're made by vehicles with two wheels, so there's, like, grass in the middle and then gravel, mm-hmm. and that's where they're walking on the yeah. gravel and not on the grass. I was like, uh, okay, that's louder for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, they go to a place that's called Spring Creek, and I was like, that is, like, the equivalent of having two first names. Uh, Spring Creek? Uh, what the hell is that? Yeah, I saw you pick up your phone when that sign came up, and I'm like, what? what? <laughs> that's <laughs> like being like, oh, let's go to Ocean Lake. <laughs> or like, you know, it's just like, oh, those are yeah, spring. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are both water. It's a, I mean, is it a spring or a creek? Okay, that's interesting, because I was confused when you said that, because I was like, what do you mean? Spring is a season. But I'm like, oh, you're talking about like a water spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they dumb. definitely could have been more creative. So dumb. So dumb. Brook River. Yeah. <laughs> one, one. so like, I want to bring up the nitpick of, which also is sort of like a broader topic, of the cochlear implant and, you know, that versus a hearing aid and how this movie comes across to the deaf community. Because... I looked this up. I don't know if you guys saw this, but like cochlear implants do not produce feedback like they do in this movie. Um, uh, hearing aids can, but they make it. They they go through pains to make it clear that it's a cochlear implant in uh, the first movie. If you want to model- actually watch Sound of Metal, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's explained away because it's it, in the first one he's modifying it. He's right. tinkering, he's tinkering with, with it. it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think he like fucks it up and that makes it a weapon. Yeah, but that's like it's kind of why is he trying to modify it? I think it wasn't working right. Oh, okay. I think he's trying to get it working again. He's trying to like, and I think that was an interesting question in the first one because you know it's particularly to, to the deaf community. The response to the movie has been like, you mean the first one or this one? The first one, and and kind of bleeding into this one, which is that you know on some levels the movie um, uh, uh, celebrates the deaf community and celebrates the you know the the fact that like you know uh, sign language helps them survive in these in these certain scenarios, and Regan ends up being like a key character in. Uh, in uh, you know helping them helping them achieve victory, so in that sense it it's a champion of the deaf community in that way. But in other ways, you know, we see the characters trying to fix her in the sense that like he's like, oh, you need to hear in order to you know survive in this world, and and he has that he has that uh, animosity towards her in the first movie because she did not realize that the the oh. rocket that she gave the kid was making sound, and that's why the kid died. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like- the kid had the batteries. She didn't know that the kid had the batteries. Right, 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 right. right. She thought there, there were no batteries. So there's all sorts of like complex layers to this. And uh, I saw people kind of saying that in this one, it's, it's, I thought that the ending kind of like champions the deaf community. I'm not deaf, obviously, but I think that I thought I saw it as sort of like a optimistic tone in the sense that she leaves her implant at the radio. So she's like, this is a tool that was given to me by my father. I'm going to use it to save the world. And she goes forth without it, you know, being like, I'm going to accept my deafness. I'm not going to be yeah. trying try to be one of these like hearing people. And I thought that was beautiful. And I also just think that the 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 amount of times that people are like 
communicating without sound and and using sign language and stuff. I think it's just like, I think it's nice. I think it. I think it. it I. I would be interested to talk to some some deaf people about this because I saw some of them talking online about it and there there are mixed feelings yeah. about how I've seen a lot of both. Go <laughs> yeah. ahead. Uh, the actress Millicent Simmons, she's actually a deaf actress. Right, right. So yes. And they brought in like consultants really nice. and stuff so they did yeah. the sign language, right? I was and wondering I, what Emily Blunt's like ASL accent is. <laughs> you know, like do deaf people watching this or are they just like, oh no, oh. Like, so <laughs> there's brutal. like kind of different dialects of yeah. American Sign Language. Like I, I didn't realize this, but there's black American Sign Language. Oh and really? It's kind of developed separate, but sort of together. So it's similar, but it uses two hands instead of one. Like, Oh, that's funny. Uh, and so I, I wonder what kind of dialects there are. And I wonder. Yeah, yes. well, even and even probably just like the little flourishes that people might put on their. You well, know, that's accent because dialect yeah. would be like different words. But right. accent that's would be like, fair. we're doing the same symbol, but I'm just exaggerating it or that's fair. That's performing fair. it a different way. Yeah. Right. Man. Nitpick, everyone's hair in the post apocalypse is way too healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Always. I yeah. was thinking that too. Yeah. I was like, her bun looks it's so, so nice. nice. I can't yeah. even get my You just let it go. Like you, you're yeah. not afraid to be greasy. Yeah, there, <laughs> there was one shot in particular. Her hair is like wavy and big, and she like looks up, and I'm like, this is like a, a shampoo commercial. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Here's a nitpick of all nitpicks. Krasinski's grabbing all this, all these apples. He grabs a pile of like six apples. And then gets a bag. Who gets yeah. the bag after the apples? You put so it right in the bag. Stupid. Yeah, and now he's trying to put the apples in the like, trying to grab the bag and open it with an armful of apples. Well, yeah. they cu they cut, so you don't have to watch that part. He's a capable father. Yeah. <laughs> he walks up to the apples and like he picks one up, he throws it in the air and catches it. Like, oh, <laughs> opens just, the bag. I'm just uh, the guy everyone loves. Throws them all up into the air and yeah. opens the bag and catches them. Yeah. What do you guys think of the moment when uh, Regan fails to kill the monster on the train and then Emmett shows up, but. As far as I understand, the armor opens up like a flower, so the the weak spot's the front, but he mm. shoots it from the back. He's got a scope. I don't know. Well, no, but there's no weak spot. The weak spot. It's all armored on the back. Uh, I think their whole head kind of opens up. Yeah. So I I don't know. Yeah, that was a bit confusing to me as well. Where I was like, how did he get that shot? But David, you're so far from the screen, you don't, you don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> also, he walks through fire, so he's fire resistant. Wait, who? There has the the creature is. You know, there were like oh. previous explosions. Yeah. yeah. So. I guess just a bullet through the head or a spike through the head. Will yeah, kill yeah, yeah, yeah. And where's the where's all the bows and arrows in this universe? Yeah, that would be the weapon of choice. I don't think a bow would kill these guys. It doesn't matter, but you could kill each other with them and not make noise. That's true. It's way better than guns. I mean, maybe the people in this area just weren't into archery. <laughs> it's forested. Wait, where were they? They were in like Michigan or something. I don't know. That's they about definitely all. would have some bows around there. Was it a watch or a compass that she was looking at? The kid? a watch. I think it was her. Her dad's, dad's watch. That was the same moment for me as the. Is that Cillian Murphy? I just, I, <laughs> is that a watch or compass? I don't remember the first movie. Kelly and James. It's freaking Kelly and Murphy for the love actually, of God. I actually thought in that instance that I was flipping my pronunciation. <laughs> I thought I was doing it the right way. That's yeah. so funny. But I don't know. Oh, that's one thing I didn't really get to say is that uh, this was a sort of a um, what do you call it? Not usual <laughs> role for Kelly and Murphy. Leading that's, man. Well. I wouldn't call him a leading man it's in this, a nice, but nice normal. This yeah, guy. I think most of the time he he seems like you know he plays kind of like a creepy guy, or he's got like something weird going on. You don't know what he's about, but in this one he's just like a normal, normal tortured apocalyptic American dad. dad. He was yeah. very good in this. Yeah. yeah, I think he did a really. Yeah, good I job. was I was surprised at how well I accepted him in this role because I'm you know I'm expecting him to be like a weird creepy guy. I think the acting overall was phenomenal. Like I really hmm. enjoyed every character. I didn't have any points where I was like. Oh, that was bad acting. Yeah, right. It's yeah. a good movie. Yeah, yeah it is. A good movie. It's a good movie. And I would good. recommend it. If you're at all interested, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, yeah, check it out. And check us out next week when we cover Star Wars Episode Star 1, Wars! The Phantom Menace. I love me some Darth oh, yeah. Maul. Ba, 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 ba. Copyright. Can't do it. <laughs> uh, tweet at us <laughs> at Carpal Critics and email us hello at carpalcritics.ca. I reply to all hello of them. Hello there. It might take me a month. <laughs> you reply to all the emails. Yeah, I... As Obi-Wan Kenobi. General, <laughs> General Kenobi. Okay, see you later. Love you.